Hello, this is Michael Julian. Today I'll be doing a review on the Workhouse FC13. I bought it on Amazon here. As you can see, I got the SFT40 version, 6500K. And the price is $46, but 20% off. Came out to $39 after tax. And like I said, I got the SFT40 version at $6,000-$6,500K. It came in this nice little box. Here's some information on the back. The box is quite nice. It's magnetic. And the flashlight came in a nice padded area, so that way it would stay safe during shipping. It came with a lanyard and two O-rings, and here they are. It also came with this Type A to Type C cable, and they recommend you charge your flashlight as soon as you get it. So we're going to go and charge it up. While it's charging, it will flash orange by the switch. First, make sure you take out the plastic cover over here that says remove by following these instructions. This film protects it while it's in transit. It also prevents the battery from completely dying before it's shipped to the customer. It also comes with this instruction booklet that we'll get more into later. And now that the light is a solid orange color, it is fully charged. An actual reason that I bought the FC13 is primarily because of the switch. Um, I just like how it looked, and it also is very responsive. Even compared to the other popular switches on the market, like the TS25 switch and the FC11 switch, it just... the FC13 has the best of both worlds. The TS25 is a little bit wiggly when you're turning it on, and the FC11 has too much resistance when trying to turn it on. Also, both of them don't stay backlit all the time. The option to have a backlit switch and button is actually a really good feature. Being able to find this at night or in the dark makes it very, very useful. In the aux lights, you can even turn it lower, dimmer, and you can even turn it completely off if you want. But the option is there if you want it. And that, in my opinion, is a really big deal, along with the fact that it looks really nice, the inside layer light and the outside layer light of the switch. These can also be changed to different colors, and we'll show you that later in the video. Let's talk about the rest of the body. The FC11 is actually much thinner than this. The FC13 is a little bit chunky. It could still be used as an everyday carry with no problem, but for personal preference, I prefer something a little bit smaller for a personal uh, everyday carry. Um, as far as the reversible clip that we have over here. It's really nice. It feels really nice. You can turn it any way you want just by going like this. You can even take the whole thing off and flip the whole thing around, which is very nice. So you can have the main clip over here going the other direction. Uh, on the bottom, you have a uh, cap. This cap is not magnetic. The FC11's cap is magnetic, as you can see right here. It has a little bit of a different look, but you can buy a magnetic tail cap and put it on here. Workhost does sell it for 2 or $3. However, I thought it would just be smart to put it on in the first place, seeing as this is not a tail switch flashlight. Another thing I really like about this is the fact that it is completely waterproof, or IP68 waterproof resistance, which means you can use it in most rainy situations and never have any issues. I also like the fact that it has a mechanical lockout. If you want to uh, turn off functionality completely to preserve battery, or if the light's just bothering you, you could just turn it off mechanically and you won't by mistake turn it on. There will be no aux light anymore, and that's really nice. Let's talk about the charging port. Since it is waterproof, the charging port is very thick. It has a little tab here. You can just pull it out, and it'll reveal the charging port. Um, this charging port uh, is one of the things that uh, really bother me about this flashlight. Um, there are so many good things about this flashlight. The fact that Workhouse didn't fix this issue uh, just drives me a little bit crazy. For example, if I take this very popular anchor cable and try to plug it in, it won't work because this anchor cable is too big, so it won't fit inside of the hole. The only charger that will work are some of the thinner chargers available and the one that came with the flashlight. But most people have a dedicated charger in their house and they don't necessarily want to uh, have to use the one that Workhouse gave, but in this case, you would have to because most of the other chargers do not fit, so keep that in mind. I bought this adapter, and it fits right in. It actually fits nicely. And I think I got this on Amazon for just a few dollars. Oops, wrong way. And if we turn it this way, hopefully it will fit. And with a little bit of wiggling and jiggling, I was able to get it in. So, I can use this adapter. Oof. Okay. And if you look at the instruction, it says it charges at 5 volts, 2.4 amps. Um, and honestly, I would be a little bit nervous in general to charge a, uh, 
and I get a little bit nervous when we charge things at those fast speeds with uh, the 18650 cells, just because I'm not sure where Workhost is getting their battery cells from, and we don't know how safe it necessarily is to charge at that speed, which is the reason I only charge mine at one amp, making sure I use a charger that only does 1000 milliamps or one amp. Using the reverse charging feature, I can actually charge another device, which is super cool. So it works as a power bank, and as you can see right here, it's charging. It says charged when I pull it out. Oof. That will come away. Having a flashlight power bank on you is actually a super cool function, and being able to charge your phone is really good. It is a 3000 milliamp battery, so uh, that will charge your phone once basically which is nice, but do keep in mind you'll need a Type-C to Type-C charger that can fit into this hole over here. Now let's take a look at the top here. It has an orange bezel, and this reflects the beam and makes it a lot smoother when it's actually on. The bevels and the grip actually contribute to having it a nice, even distributed weight across the entire flashlight, making it easy to carry, and you can obviously move the clip to whichever direction suits you best. I don't think that this position would be best, but maybe right here would be best. So that way you can reach the switch at the same time. This, the clip does not interfere with your uh, pressing the button. Now the reason why I chose the SFT40 like the FT11's um, emitter is because the uh, SFT40 was my preferred light and it wasn't because it was a little bit cheaper. Honestly, the spill was very good and it had very good throw. It would provide decent range at the lower levels and much better than the XP, XHP 50.2. The XHP 50.2 seems to provide a more impressive light in the beginning on the higher ranges, but as it goes down, the light seems to be much less impressive. Therefore, I'd rather a lower level, longer lasting, continuous, I guess, beam that would provide, a, I guess, better value over a long periods of time. I'm really glad that the SFN 43 LED was discontinued, so it's not really relevant anymore, but um, I think that was a far less superior uh, emitter, so I'm glad they discontinued that. Uh, my personal preference is this LED over here, the SFT40. And uh, let's talk about the battery and taking it apart. So if we take this apart, You'll see there are four different parts over here, um, and this is the Workhouse 3000 milliamp hour battery, which is their standard battery that they give out with all of their 18650 lights. And you can pick up the 18350 tube and make this flashlight half the size. You just have to get an 18350 battery, and you basically have a flashlight that's super mini. I usually always get black, so therefore everything always matches nicely. On Workhouse's website, this tube costs less than $2 and definitely a worthwhile investment. The batteries for the 18650s uh, are about $5 a piece, and you can get that uh, any batteries. You can even get non-rechargeable ones. These batteries seem like they're very good value, and they work well. Another cool feature or something that you can buy as a accessory is this diffuser. Um, this is actually meant for the FC11. As you see, it's a little bit stretched to, in order to fit the FC13, but it provides light to a large area and therefore giving it a huge spill while really reducing the throw uh, to basically nothing. However, it really lights up the entire area. I would highly recommend getting one of these for situations where you'd actually just need to light up a room. It does fit a lot better on the FC11, as you'll be able to see right here. You just put it right on and it fits a lot nicer, but it does also work for the FC-13, and I don't think they make a specific one for the FC-13 yet, so I'll just have to stick with the one for the FC-11. I want to talk about the reason why I chose the, uh, I guess, 6000 to 6500 light. Uh, not only did it come with it, but uh, I'm planning on using this outdoors, and therefore I think the uh, whiter the light, the cold white the light is, uh, the better it is for outdoors, and therefore that's why I'm using this as an outdoor light. Now this light has Android 2 firmware on it, which means that it has a lot of cool features. However, don't get overwhelmed because uh, using it in the simple user interface is actually quite easy. If you find yourself getting lost, you can easily reset it. Just twist the tail cap like this and hold down the button. Once you hold it down for a few seconds, 
Just wait, keep on holding it down until it does that, and you reset into the simple UI mode. It'll reset it to factory settings. And let's take a look at the simple mode. In the simple mode, you won't necessarily be able to control the RGBs, but you can just turn on and off your flashlight. Click it once, click it another time, it's off and on. Uh, now, if you want to change the uh, brightness of the light, just turn it on, hold it down, it will get brighter, and then if you hold it down again, it will get dimmer. And you can get it all the way down to the dimmest setting, so now it's super dim. And you can just keep on doing that, and then you can turn it off. And it will remember your brightness setting when you turn it back on, so if you like to keep it at the same brightness setting, that's a good idea. And the end of the rule simple UI is actually shown right here, so since the factory settings are simple UI, you'll probably be in it when you first get your flashlight. Another simple UI feature is just double click and you'll go into turbo, double click again and it'll go back. So double click, turbo, I think even if you click once it could turn the whole flashlight off, but if you are in turbo and you double click again, it'll go back to regular. If you want to change from stepless to stepped brightness switching modes or ramping mode, turn your flashlight on, click three times, one, two, three. And now we're going to switch between stepped and stepping modes. So now when you hold down, as you can see, the light is stepping between modes instead of uh, just stepless switching brightness levels. Let's switch to advanced UI only to change the RGBs. So let's switch. Let's show you how to switch. You press it 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And hold down. And once you hold down, you'll be able to switch. Uh, so we're in advanced UI now. We're going to click and hold seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we're in brighter uh, RGB mode. So now we can see the light is a lot brighter on the switch and it's switching colors. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now it's blinking. As you can see, it's blinking with a heavy uh, color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now it's going to be completely off. So we can do it again to get into the low. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is low. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is high. It's just on. So now let's switch between colors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold. And as you can see, it's changing colors. Let's keep it green. Okay, so now it's green. And we could also just turn it on and off. And as you see, whenever I turn it on, the uh, RGB light turns off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to change into uh, rainbow. As you can see, this is very rapidly changing between colors. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, there are a whole bunch of different modes. We'll just leave it at blue. Um, so here is the advanced UI. As you can see, it's very complicated. Um, you can easily check it on your instructions or online, but uh, there's moonlight mode, there's firefly mode, there's lockout mode. Lockout mode is also in the simple UI. If you ever need to reset it, do what I told you. Just hold down for four seconds after you unscrew it and screw it back on. It will reset. And uh, let's say one last thing about um, this FC13 is that uh, Workhouse has really great customer service. So they make good lights, they make them cheap, and they have good customer service compared to a lot of the other companies. Um, they, they listen to their customers. Uh, the, the SFT43, uh, the SFN43 was a really bad light and they switched it out because they listened to their customers. So um, I just like buying things from them just because it was customer service. They always respond. They have Facebook, they have email, they have a lot of different ways of communication. So in conclusion, should you buy this light? Well, there are reasons when you'd buy this light and there are reasons when you'd buy a different flashlight such as the Workhouse FC11. If you're a flashlight enthusiast and you like to have the Android 2 firmware and you don't want some such simple UI, then you might want to get this. If you really like the backlit button and you always want your flashlight to be lit so that way you can press the button, that might be a reason to get this as well. Um, but if you're looking for a just very simple flashlight and you don't really care so much about the LEDs or the colors or anything like that and you want a magnetic tail cap um, and you don't mind just having you know some basic functions and no backlit, uh, no backlit switch, then this might be the better option for you. If you even want to get a double-sided clip, you can get a double-sided clip, and you could just switch them out. They are, um, you could buy a clip that would fit the FC11. Uh, you could also make it with a shorter tube if you want a smaller flashlight. That's also a very good option. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention 
if having a magnetic tail cap is important to you, you can also buy that for two, three dollars on Workhorse's website, so that's really nice. Another thing that people uh, might want to consider is that if you see over here, the Workhorse FC11 has a nice big spot to plug in your power bank or your charger. So um, if you find yourself struggling, uh, or you would struggle with this charger, you might want to consider uh, getting an FG11 just so that uh, if you want to use it as a power bank and you don't want to get stuck, this will fit. As you can see, I have my anchor cable right here, and it fits perfectly into the FC11. However, the FC13, it will not fit. So that's something that you might want to keep in mind. I'm not sure how much of a difference that will make to you. One last thing that the FC13 has the FC11 doesn't is that this orange bezel that really uh, smooths the beam out and makes it real nice. So if that makes a difference to you as well, um, you might want to consider it. Otherwise, I would uh, stick with something more simple. But um, if you're a flashlight enthusiast and you like the light, uh, definitely a good recommendation. This is a good flashlight. It's a good buy. You won't be upset with the buy. It's not a bad flashlight at all. Um, just there might be better options if you're looking for something else. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped you, and I hope this wasn't too long. Have a great day.